Well, hello there. Just wanted to talk to you about all these doomsday predictions that's been going on. Since I've been on the planet some 59 years, there's been quite a few doomsday predictions, starting back in 1966, where they predicted that all the oil would be gone in 10 years. In 1967, they said there would be dire famines by 1975. In 1968, they said overpopulation will spread. 1969, everyone will disappear in a cloud of blue steam by 1969. Sorry, by 1989. 1969, there will be worldwide plague, overwhelming pollution, Ecolo ecological catastrophe and virtual collapse of the UK by the end of the 20th century. Now, 1970 was a very busy year for doomsday predictions, so we'll just rattle through some of those, shall we? So we'll just do the 1970s. Uh, the world will use up all its natural resources. Well, still hasn't happened. There will be an ice age by 20. Sorry, there will be an ice age by the year 2000. America will be subject to water rationing by 1974 and food rationing by 1980. Urban citizens will require face masks by 1985. Nitrogen buildup will make all land unusable. Decaying pollution will kill all fish life. And the last one in 1970 was that they were going to be killer bees. 1971, they said that there was going to be an ice age by the year 2020 or 2030. In 1972, the prediction was that oil would be depleted in 20 years. Now, depending on depletion, there will be shortages in gold, tin, oil, natural gas, copper, and aluminium. 1972 again. There will be an ice age by 2070. I've got notes. 1975, there was predicted that there would be a world cooling and a dramatic decline in food production. This is actually opposite to what's happening now. 1974, Space satellites showed a new ice age was coming, and it was coming fast. 1974, another prediction for an ice age. Yeah, two in the same year. 1974, ozone depletion is a great peril to life. Well, my company was one of the companies that was responsible for the hole in the ozone layer down in Australia because we were a fridge uh, container ship and we used to uh, vent the system quite regularly to get rid of any water that had gone in there. Anyway, so part of our ozone depleting gases that we would discharge in the atmosphere was causing the ozone layer to disappear. But that's since fixed itself. So 1976, a scientific consensus is that the planet is cooling and famine is imminent. 1977, the US Department of Energy says that oil will peak in the 1990s. 1978, they said there's no sight to a, sorry, there's no end in sight to a 30 year cooling trend. 1980, acid rain will kill lakes, uh, life in all the lakes. Well, we did start to reduce our sulfur in our fuel back then. So we started on uh, sulfur, low, low sulfur fuels. So uh, our engines had to change its cylinder lubrication because sulfur was actually used as a lubricant in the cylinders. Um, not that you might have known that. Anyway, um, 1980, there was going to be a peak in oil production in the year 2000. 1988, there were a big jump there from 1980 to 1988, 
world leading climate expert predict that Lower Manhattan will be under water by 2018. 1988, regional droughts in the US. Temperatures in DC will hit record highs. 1988 again, Maldives will be under water by 2018. 1989, the, the UN warns that entire nations will be wiped off the face of the earth by the year 2000 because of global warming. 1989, sea levels will obliterate nations if nothing is done by the year 2000. New York City's West Side Highway will be underwater by 2019. Now the year 2000, children won't know what snow is. 2020, sorry, 20, the year 2000 again. Snowfall will be a thing of the past. 2002, famine in 10 years if we don't give up eating fish, meat and dairy. 2002, oil will peak in 2010. 2004, Britain will be a Siberia by 2024. In 2005, they predicted that Manhattan will be underwater by 2015. 2005, 50 million climate refugees by the year 2020. 2006, there will be super hurricanes. 2006 again. The climate genius known as Al Gore said that sea levels will rise by 20 feet in the near future. 2008, Arctic will be ice free by 2018. 2008, again, the climate genius known as Al Gore predicted <clears throat> Ice-free Antarctic, sorry, ice-free Arctic by 2013. Now, another climate genius known as King Charles has said that we have 96 months in which to save the world. 2009 again, Prime Minister said, that the, sorry, the British Prime Minister said that we have 50 days in which to save the planet from catastrophe. 2009 again. Climate genius known as Al Gore moves his 2013 prediction of an ice-free Arctic to 2014. This is one I don't get. There was a 2011, there was a prediction by the Washington Post. It said that cherry blossoms will be blooming in winter. So I don't know what that one's about, but anyway, that was a prediction. 2013, Arctic-free Arctic ice free by 2015 and in 2014 there was only 500 days before the climate chaos. In 2015 Barack Obama predicted that there would be a rise of two to four feet in the ocean levels within our children's lifetime. Yeah, scaremongering again. I see that <laughs> since then Obama and uh, Al Gore have actually purchased seafront residences. So they obviously don't believe their own predictions, do they? So anyway, there was a gap of four years without any climate predictions. And in 2018, Greta Thunberg was quoted as saying, humanity will be wiped out by June 2023, but then deleted her tweet. So given all these failed predictions, why would we listen to any of the modern day predictions? Yeah, I fell for all this climate nonsense uh, and I'm the only person in the street that's got solar panels. And I also campaigned to stop the dumping of plastic in the oceans. The plastics that you see on the street and in the oceans they're not polluting, they don't do any damage to the environment, they just look unsightly. I've, I've seen the oceans littered with plastics firsthand, and it's mainly plastic bottles that 
the, you know, the drinking water bottles that you see floating about because people put the lids on. But this isn't causing problems. It's actually providing refuge for marine organisms to live in out at sea, just the same as we're used to when wood and stuff got washed out to sea. That would form little refuges for our sea creatures. But what is a danger to marine life is discarded fishing nets. Uh, as we know, a discarded fishing net will still kill fish, turtles, marine mammals, and all that kind of stuff. Now, I've seen this firsthand myself. I've actually witnessed a humpback whale with a lobster pot wrapped around its tail. And this wasn't in some far-flung, distant, tropical island. This was actually in Scotland. Uh, and uh, they, had, they had to ha ship in some experts from America to come and free this poor humpback whale from, the, from this uh, lobster pot that was wrapped around its tail. But luckily, it survived, so that was a good thing. Even microplastics that we find in marine organisms aren't really a harm to us. But <laughs> I tell you now, the idea of ingesting plastics is, uh, is frightening to me. But anyway, moving on to the last two predictions. As you may have seen on television, Sadiq Khan and King Charles unveiled a doomsday clock in June of 2023. Now they say that we have six months, but, <laughs> but they fail to mention what's going to happen. But trust me, they're going to tax us on this one, I tell you. Right, it's been estimated that it's going to cost you and me roughly about £20,000 to fix a non-existent problem. And this is one of the reasons that I'm doing this video, is to get the message out there. Right? We need to follow the science. Not the science that the government says we should be following, but real science. One of the things I don't want is my money being thrown into the void for something that's happening on a natural Earth cycle. Anyway, in 2023, Just Stop Oil also predicted that global temperatures will increase by 1.5 degrees centigrade. A well-known climate scientist by the name of Dr. John Christie has said that we are unable to predict the climate. Even after using real data from history, we will be unable to predict climate for today or yesterday. So how are we going to be able to predict the climate for the future? There is no climate model capable of predicting future climate. However, I've said this before, we, we are running out of oil, we are running out of coal, and, but what, why aren't we focusing on clean nuclear energy, such as nuclear fusion? And why aren't we focusing on hydro energy? Yeah, this is, this is natural seawaters that where the tide flows into a natural harbour and the tide flows out of a natural harbour. Why can't we put generators in there? They will generate electricity just using the gravitational pull of the, of the water through the thing. But anyway, we're still building ships at sea that will be burning fossil fuels for the next 30 years. Because every ship that I've been on has a life of at least 30 years. After some ships, more the uh, line is going to go, some ships will last for 50 years. Some of the more uh, sturdier ships that are built in better yards. Now, the container ships that I were on, they lasted for 30 years, and at the end of 30 years, they were sold on or scrapped. But I have seen ships that, are, that have been around for 50 years, and boy, are they inefficient. But that's, that's what's going to happen, I'm afraid, is we are going to have to continue to use oil for at least the next 30 years. Why, oh, why aren't we focusing on nuclear fusion? That could be ready by 2030. We could be almost there. But anyway, so I rabbit it on. That's all my thing is if, if, we, if we cannot 
predict the future, why are we paying an absolute arm and a leg to the government? Why are we giving them money? How is that going to fix something that we have no control over? Anyway, that's enough. See you later. Bye then.